So I'm here to talk about the title of the talk is Small Streams and Big Dreams. As a researcher in the field of fish forestry interaction over the last 20 years, I've had good opportunity to work through a large number of large and small watersheds. Uh, watersheds can simply be defined as the area of land that contributes water to the point that you're standing in the river. They're ever-changing, beautifully nested systems that really exemplify the phrase that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. The small streams that we hop across combine to make larger streams, and this continues in a downward progression through the watershed till you reach the outlet that may be so wide you have the boat across it. So we don't get large streams without small streams, yet inherently we value large streams more. And consequently, until relatively recently, small streams were not particularly well studied. It's important to recognize that small streams contribute water, energy, elements to these large stream systems, but in addition to that, they have unique characteristics that make them valuable habitat on the landscape. Riparian zones are the area of land between the stream edge and the upland forest, and they mark a transition in plants and animals, as well as soil moisture and microclimate conditions. In the 2000s, a group of hydrology and fishery scientists in the northern interior region tackled the problem about small stream riparian management issues. Uh, there were questions raised about small stream riparian management, and they developed a study where they looked at the consequence of removing trees from the riparian zone, its effect on both the riparian zone and the stream. Now, not surprisingly, they identified change in both environments, but more importantly than the change that was identified, they keyed in on a few findings, two of which I'll identify here. And that is within the first 10 meters closest to the stream edge, you needed to enhance retention because that was your long-term supply of large wood to the stream. And the second being that you wanted to maintain shade, so maintaining trees within that area to buffer air and stream temperature increases. Since that initial study, the project has now gone into a long-term research installation where we're looking at post-harvest recovery. And the value of these types of projects is sometimes they can provide us insight to management issues that come up after the initial project was scoped out. In this case, some of the information that we can use from this project will be helpful for identifying uh, issues related to climate change. Climate change has and will continue to affect temperature and precipitation regimes everywhere. In our northern region, we've seen increases in temperature over the last 100 years. Uh, mean annual temperatures increased by about 1.7 degrees Celsius. And by 2055, if hold true, that should increase to about 3 degrees Celsius. Now as air temperature increases, so too will stream temperature, particularly in those streams that have minimal riparian buffers. So what? You may ask, what, why does an increase in temperature matter? Well, an increase in air and stream temperature will affect the plants and animals that live within and around these streams. And with stream temperature particularly, if temperatures increase to thresholds that are beyond biotic limits of cold water fish species or temperature sensitive species such as bull trout, they may lose habitat. To address this issue, we started the project in 2018 with uh, climate scientists and fishery scientists to investigate whether or not we could use a geospatial climate change based model to identify or predict future stream temperatures throughout the northern interior region. This model, part of the Climate Shield program out of the U.S. Pacific Northwest, uses physical characteristics of the watershed, as well as historical air and stream temperature, and then looks at future projected air temperature to identify what stream temperature variability and or conditions may be. We're currently testing this model. In addition to the temperature monitoring we're doing, we're also gathering fish presence information to see if the fish that we're concerned about, in this case bull trout, is actually in the location that we're assessing. Once validated, this model will be really helpful in looking across our region and identifying those watersheds that are particularly susceptible to increases in temperature. That's going to have influences on overall hydrology of the system, water quality, and potentially fish habitat. Now, you might be asking, the title slide said small streams, big dreams. How does this project relate to small streams and really what were the big dreams? Well, armed with the, um, armed with the information that we have about increased stream temperature, this is a good example of using existing information we have from long-term research projects and those that are past, bringing those findings forward. So particularly when we talk about something such as increased stream temperatures with bull trout, how do we solve that issue? Well, we can look at small streams 
talk about riparian management and the findings in that, that location. The other thing is that we can um, recognize that as research goes, much like watersheds, research is a nested system. Studies build upon other studies. So we can bring these findings forward and use an increases in technology or advancements in technology, similar to drones, as was talked about earlier, remote sensing, LIDAR, and as shown in the image here, thermal imaging, where we can clearly see warmer groundwater contributions identified in orange and yellow coming into a cool water stream. This combination of information and advancement in technology is only going to improve our understanding of overall riparian function and stream function. On a final note, I would just like to say that it's been professionally rewarding to work in these integrated teams addressing interdisciplinary issues, not only for the social aspect of it, reaching that end goal, attaining our objectives, and providing information that's useful for operations, but really, more importantly, to actually see it applied on the ground. And this is what we can see in this location, where two streams side by side, both are small stream systems about a meter wide, and we can see enhanced buffer zones, actually about 12 to 15 meters out. This kind of improvement of operational practice is beneficial to the stream, and in turn, it's going to increase the resilience of the watershed upon which we draw for our uh, resources for our, our livelihoods as well as our, our existence. Thank you.